anyway, in this main event fighting out of the blue quarter, introducing Sherman Bernard Griffin. And now presenting his opponent, making his way to the ring, please welcome Buster Mathis Jr. of age. He'll not only be the older, the taller, the heavier, but also the reach advantage. But one thing about Buster Mathis is that he will negate any kind of reach advantage you might have. He'll work off the chest of Sherman Griffin if he can get inside, and that'll be his game plan today, trying to keep his record unblemished at 13-0. along with John Saraceno as we welcome you to the heavyweight explosion and this being our main event the heavyweights on the right in the blue Buster Mathis Jr. against Sherman Griffin out of St. Louis Missouri Buster fighting out of Grand Rapids Michigan they've come a long way to fight though here in Tokyo Japan Buster 13 and 0 despite the fact that he lost in a fight to the bounty hunter and then the hunter of course testing positive for drugs so it was ruled a no contest uh, even though it was a loss to Mathis not officially on his record. This is not a title fight, and now Buster gets staggered with a pretty good left hand by Sherman Griffin. And Buster's in immediate trouble, Sam. Back up against the ropes. He may need to start punching back and get off the ropes. On a set, he needs to go face down. So Sherman Griffin has found Buster Mathis. Loving right hand. And he was staggered earlier, so I'm not so sure that Buster didn't have all his senses when he got hit with that shot. This, by the way, is a non-title fight, but if Buster 
Mathis does lose this fight. The USBA title would be ruled as vacant. Big tough right hands thrown by Sherman Griffin on the inside, and Buster still hasn't got his legs on In case some folks wonder about Sherman Griffin, if that name sounds familiar, he beat Evander Holyfield at the Golden Gloves in 1984 before the Olympics, but then lost to Holyfield at the Olympic trials. Did not make the Olympic team. Of course, Evander Holyfield went on to become cruiserweight and then heavyweight champion. Actually, Griffin had gone on to win the USBA Cruiserweight title by defeating a future champion in Jeff Lampkin. But then had some uh, run-ins with the law, went to prison, and was out for more than three years and is now making a comeback at the age of 31. Buster starting to punch back here in the first round, and, and not any time too late, Sam. He's in a lot of trouble here. Big first round for Sherman Griffin. Well, a big first round for Buster Mathis, too, because it has just been announced that he will fight. Of course, Reddick Bowe coming on June 11th on an HBO title uh, fight there, or at least a championship caliber fight. And now here he is in trouble in the first round, being down once by Sherman Griffin. Got to wonder if that served as a distraction for Buster coming into this fight, knowing that the negotiations for that fight were come, were uh, ongoing. Uh, but at this point, the biggest distraction is the right hand of Sherman Griffin. Well, Sherman is really looking sharp in round one. Now Buster is definitely fighting back. Even Sherman staggers a little bit here. Sherman got shook up with that right hand. There's a left hook by Buster, one of his favorite punches, landing solidly to the chin. Great first round. Really has warmed up to the heavyweights here. Sherman Griffin has thrown a little curveball to the USBA champion, Buster Mathis, who not only has the ice water over the top of his head, but has been clumped pretty good by Griffin out of St. Louis. Sounds like, a little, sounds like a little Tweety Bird there, Sam, but I wonder if Buster's sitting on his tool, stool thinking, wow. I really got hit hard here. I'm starting to hear birds chirping. Well, I tell you what, not only did Griffin use some good body shots to kind of soften him up, but then when he dropped his guard, boy, he landed that big hand, and, and down goes Buster. And the key to that round also for Sherman was putting his punches together. You notice he just wasn't throwing one shot at a time. He was throwing two, three, four punches. We'll take a look at it again, John. Kind of missed with the left uppercut there, but he's going to come back with a right hand. Kind of also a grazing blow. But somewhere in there, he landed. Apparently, that, that punch had more effect than it looked like on a replay. This is round two of a non-title fight as the USBA champion in the blue. Buster Mathis Jr. comes out fighting and throws a pretty good left hand on Sherman Griffin. But again, Mathis down in round one. And he's come back with a vengeance here in the second round. And we see Griffin pumping that jab out. We saw the Tyrell Biggs fight with Sherman uh, with uh, Buster Mathis. And Buster has a hard time getting past the jab. If you keep it in his face, it keeps you, it keeps him off your chest, and you've got to do that. And that's got to be a, a large part of the blueprint for victory for Sherman Griffin tonight here in Tokyo. If the name Buster Mathis sounds familiar to boxing fans, it should. His father was a great contender back in the 60s. He fought a lot of the top fighters, including Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, George Shibano, along with Jerry Quarry. A great contender in the 60s, and now trains Buster. Buster Sr. has some uh, very poor health, Albert, and is not able to travel with his son around the world. So I know he's viewing our fights tonight here from Tokyo, and he's wishing the very best of health. Right now, I'm sure he's sending out the best to help for his son, John, because he has looked like he's recovered pretty well, but that was a shaky first round of the USBA champion. Tell you, exactly back to this. Tell you what's interesting, Sam, is that Sherman Griffin, after he got stunned near the end of the first round, he seems to have a little bit more respect, respect for Buster Mathis. You see him retreating a little bit more, working behind his jab, being a little bit more cautious. There's that good combination. Buster will do that. And one of the things you'll notice as this fight proceeds, if it goes longer, you'll start to hear Buster Mathis making more noise of his punches. He really will kind of make a kind of a grunting sound on every punch. Right now he's not doing so. You know when he's in the groove when you start hearing him grunt with the punches, and we'll hear that later on in the fight. It's kind of like Jimmy Connors with the boxing gloves on. There you go. Uh, Monica Sellers, who drove me right up the wall with that uh, running in her tennis matches, but it works for her, and it works for Buster Mathis. Sometimes you need that extra oomph. Yeah. <laughs>
Expel all the demons from within. You can already start to hear him kind of expel some air every time he throws a punch. And I tell you what, Buster has definitely come back in the second round. This is a nice return for Buster Mathis. Good recovery for Buster in this round. He's working the jab. He's really putting the pressure on Sherman. You know, we alluded to the fact that Sherman Griffin, that excellent amateur career, Buster really didn't have that long an amateur career. 20 and 5 with six knockouts. Not known as a knockout puncher. But however, he was a five-time Michigan Golden Glove champion. He said he tried a lot of other sports. He said, I was pretty bad. Not bad as in good. He said, I was bad. So he turned to boxing much to the chagrin of his father. who really didn't want him to go into boxing, but the rest of the with his father now training on two round number two of this fight tonight in Tokyo. Buster Mathis corner. Brian Lee is working on the inside, the manager of him, along with the trainer, along with Buster's father. Bruce Kelty working outside. An outstanding duo of men that we really enjoy working with around the world. Very appreciative of the work of Cedric Kushner and the Corona Extra crews as we travel around the world to watch the heavyweights, including their own and Buster Mathis. Also very accommodating with the information on Buster. And always willing to try to set up interviews with Buster, and it's always appreciated. Sherman Griffin on the other side. Just starting to get back in his own. Grew up in the very tough St. Louis suburbs. Moved to Texas when he turned as a pro. And again, a little run-in with the last three. three years, but now he definitely is coming back as he gets ready to answer the bell for round three. I gave Buster that second round 10 to 9, but still having the trail in his hand because of the knockdown he suffered in the first round. Did you rule that a 10-8 for sure in the first round? Yes. Okay. So Buster Mathis again down in round one. Buster, the USBA champion, as we open the bell for round three, coming back strong in the second round and now clutching his way into contention in the third round. He made a reference to uh, Buster's amateur career. He did not have that many fights. He's still learning how to have a professional game. He really is. Uh, there's some things he needs to work on. He's not the most powerful puncher, but he's got quick, active hands that will keep him in a lot of fights. Good clubbing left hand that time by Buster. And that's one of his weapons, John, is the fact that this is where he likes to be. This is his office right here. But, boy, he'll unleash that left hand, and he's got a pretty good left hook. Now Sherman Griffin does not need to be fighting on the inside here with Buster Mathis. I mean, it's not what he did in the first round. It's not what he really did in the second round either. And I think he's going to get the worst of this kind of a strategy. Now Buster does not have the greatest jab in the world. He kind of paused with his jab. I think I'd want him on the outside trying to lunge in and then catching him with right hands. You know, Sherman Griffin has a 13-1 record. Only lost to Edward Griffin back in 1985 when he lost to 6-9 in the early part of his career. Actually, in 87, he's gone with a couple of good uh, bouts. He beat Bobby Crabtree, knocked him out in four rounds, and then went 11 with Jesse Shelby for the Texas title in the Cruiserweight division. And everybody thought he was really going to be one of the real premier fighters, but then, as we alluded to, some personal problems, went to prison, and now making a comeback at the age of 31. Not the easiest thing to do in professional boxing is that long layoff. Uh, you mentioned before he had some problems and he spent some time in prison to come back and uh, try to fight at a high level. By the way, that knockdown of Mathis back in the first round, it would not be unusual to see an opponent go down of the 13 knockouts. Interesting enough, Sherman has won 13 fights and all of his wins have been by, by knockout. And the only time that uh, the fighters have gone by, he had three knockouts in the first, one in the second, and one in the third. So he is an early starter. And with Mathis going down early, that would have been almost the way that he's put a lot of the fighters down. But Mathis is able to recover, and he definitely is back in control of this fight again. This third round has turned into a real body attack for both fighters, but uh, Buster's getting the best of it. And I really don't understand Griffin's uh, strategy here, except unless he wants to conserve a little energy for the later rounds. Yeah, you know, you'd have to probably figure maybe Griffin might have punched himself out a little bit and trying to rest because he did have an active first round, that's for sure. Another thing you see with fighters as they begin getting older and their legs go a little soft is they use the ropes a lot just to help support themselves. You can hear the appreciation.
any applause in the background as this crowd here in Tokyo, Japan, waiting for something big to happen. They really got excited in that first round when Mathis went down, expecting the worst for Buster, but he has recovered quite nicely, thank you. Hey, we got excited when we saw him go down. Shock may have been a better <laughs> word for us. I think that was Buster's round, don't you think? Yeah, I think he. I think he's back in control of the fight. He's yeah, clearly got the cobwebs out of his head. He clearly was hurt. I mean, that may not have looked like that biggest punch, but he definitely hurt him. And this is where he likes to work, right off the ropes. There's his left hook, which he loves to throw, Ooh. followed by the right uppercut. Tyson used to throw that combination in his heyday. Good short shots from both fighters. And no, keeping him no. in his elbows right in the corner. Welcome to the Toronto Extra Heavyweight Explosion from Tokyo, Japan. This is round four as Buster Mathis Jr. battles against Sherman Griffin. Buster getting up off the canvas in round one. They come back and take pretty good control in the second and third round. Sam Smith along with John Saracino. Glad you could join us on our heavyweight explosion. Bringing you Buster Mathis who again has just been announced to fight ready to go June 11th. So this is a major fight for him against Sherman Griffin. That was a major step up in class by Buster. Great though, I think, when he's trained properly and motivated, still the best ever in the world. Of course, Evander Holyfield wanted it more in the rematch. Sherman Griffin trying to battle back, but Buster is starting to get the accumulation of punches in on the 31-year-old Griffin. Also, I don't like what I see with Griffin's legs. He looks a bit unsteady. I think that's why we saw him go to the ropes early, Sam. You know, Buster not only really proud of that 13 and 0 professional record, he's also most appreciative of his education. He's already graduated from a two-year community college and now attends a Grand Valley State College where he's studying computer science. So not only working to improve his boxing skills and maybe make a little coin, but also looking out for his future down the road. Nice to see from a very nice young man. Looking trying to exchange with Buster Mathis here in round four. And you saw Sherman make a nice move there. He was against the ropes. He spun out and turned. Got Mathis against the rope. Followed up with a nice combination. For you folks that are continually trying to lose weight, let me give you a little heart here if I could. Buster Mathis on the right still has a little pussy look about him at 221 and three quarters, but keep in mind he once weighed 305 pounds. Wow, he lost half himself. You know, we tend to make fun of guys who are overweight, and I know I've done that many times myself. Look at him come on here, John. Really pounding away on Griffin. health problems. We send our best wishes to Buster Sr. in Michigan. You see Buster Mathis trying to take the measure here of Sherman Griffin. Buster down in the first round, recovering here in the fourth. And has fought very well in the last three rounds. Just team up on uh, Griffin at the end of that round. Another big round for Buster. Buster Mathis again still showing some wear and tear as he goes to the corner. And I can't tell you how shocking that is when you get that cold water off the top of your head after fighting for three solid minutes and the heat that you build up. Such a sharp contrast. And you see also it appears he's got a cut inside of his mouth as he is spitting out the water with some blood in it. So he has been hit pretty good by Sherman Griffin here tonight. Surprising down in the first. I mean, that had to be the wake up call he certainly needed in this fight, that's for sure. A lot of times a fighter can come out cold. He's just not warmed up properly. Uh, that, that could have contributed to it. Action here from the fourth round. See, Sherman Griffin's not punching him, he's in punching range. That was a grazing left hook. Round of five. Nice right hand followed by another left. Buster is just relentless. He's a busy fighter. 
Very busy fighter, and that's going to keep him in a lot of fights because he doesn't really have the power, one punch power to take him out. A two heavyweight speed in the center of the ring for the start of round five and a heavyweight explosion. La Cerveza Masfina, Corona Extra, bringing you the international fights tonight from Tokyo, Japan. Lester Mathis on the right in the blue. Sherman Griffin now fighting out of Texas, even though he still resides in St. Louis, Missouri. Tough street kid when he came out of the amateur ranks. Good, solid amateur background, as John pointed out. Actually defeated the current world champion, Amanda Holyfield, back in 84. Thought he was cruising into the Olympic Games with Holyfield beating him in the trials. Knocked him out of the champs today in the Olympic Games. I think I can hear Buster Sr. back home in Michigan telling his son, move your head a little bit. Even though he's not getting hit, the Sherman's not firing back to the head. Buster has a bad habit of not moving his head at times. And he gets a fighter like Riddick Bell, if he fights him in June, you know, when that fight comes off. That could be lethal. You know, Buster stands 6'6", six, six. Riddick Bowe is what, 6'5", 6'4 six, and a half? 6'5". Six, six, yeah. So he's, we're talking about a sculpture type looking fighter that Buster will be fighting on June the 11th. He'll be fighting uphill, and he's got to get inside on Riddick Bowe to try to swim any punches he throws, because he stays outside and tries to punch with him. That could be a long, long day, or maybe a short day for Buster. Buster just has his head glued to Sherman Griffin's chest and head. Not giving Griffin any punching room. Slowly but surely, you're starting to hear more and more coming out of Buster Mathis. And this is what you'll hear in the latter part of the fight. He'll start to make more sound of those punches. And when he starts doing that, he's in his groove. You know, Griffin throws his jab. He's really got a good chance of beating Buster. I just got to believe it's his legs. And perhaps his condition, why he's laying against the ropes as much as he is. Because that's the wrong way to fight Buster Mathis Jr. Punch, jab, move. He's not been able to do that since the early rounds. Mostly because of Buster's kind of clinging style, as you pointed out, kind of just gluing his head right on his shoulders. But he's allowing him to do that. Yeah, and as a fighter, you can't allow the other man to impose his will on you. You have to take control of your own style and fight the fight that will give the other man points. He's not doing that. We'll be halfway through this fight here as we reach the end of round number five. Again, an important fight for Buster Mathis Jr., a non-title fight, but should he lose today, he would be stripped of the title, at least the title would be vacated. The USBA heavyweight title would be ruled as vacant. And with Mathis set to fight ready go, it would be quite a downer, but he has really recovered it after going down in round one against Sherman Griffin as we finish round five. Fighters almost semi staggered in their stools as again there is some fatigue setting down early here through five rounds. Buster again getting that wake up call from behind, kind of taking your breath away, if you will. I've never seen a fighter quite labor in the corner with his breathing like Buster Jr. does. He really opens up that mouth and sucks all the oxygen he can possibly get to his lungs. You know, we may see the best punch of the night when Buster stands up and decks Bruce Kelty standing over the ropes for dumping that water on him. He said, I've, I've had all that I can take. <laughs> Buster Mathis, again, a good hard worker, never had doubt in his heart, that's for sure. His skills, his talent, and of course, maybe not so much his conditioning. You look at him and say, boy, he's not in very good condition. You don't have to doubt that. He'll stay around for 10 rounds. It's amazing to see a guy who doesn't Round appear to be in very good shape at all throw as many punches yeah. for as long as he does. And we saw in the Tyrell Biggs fight. Uh, I've got Buster ahead in this fight, 48-46 after five rounds. And keep in mind, that's after he's been knocked down in the first round as we enter the sixth round of a 10-round fight. Buster Mathis with that huge rump, hips, and legs. That's where his real power is when he starts setting down on it. Good uppercut inside on Sherman Griffin again. Yeah, Buster showed a good arsenal of punches. He's hooked. He's coming straight right and left. And also he's coming with an uppercut on Griffin when he gets in on his chest. He's got him in trouble on the ropes again. Sherman Griffin fought last in February. Carl McGrew went down in uh, six rounds with a decision. Again, I alluded to winning all of his fights by knockout. Excuse me, that wasn't there. He won that one by decision. He won 12 others by a knockout. So he's trying to come back, but again, very few fights since his prison stint. Fought only 
Consider that he has defeated some relatively good heavyweights on his way up. I mean, guys, it'll test you. We mentioned uh, Mark Young, the journeyman out of Charlotte that stayed right on his chest. Mike, Mike Dixon, Carl Williams, also Levi Phillips, who he defeated over in South Africa. I thought that was a pretty much of a major win in the fact that Phillips has been in with some pretty good people himself. Those are all seasoned fighters, Sam. You're right. And conversely, Sherman Griffin, who had a much more extensive amateur career, than Buster Mathis Jr. did. As a professional, he hasn't really had the kind of competition. Jeff Lampkin, probably the best fighter he ever fought. Uh, and that was a cruiserweight back in 1987. He's also fought Everett Martin back in 85. Uh, and Everett's been in with all the heavyweights. Martin, the only man to defeat him. He lost that decision in six. Did There's that good action again by Buster Mathis Jr. You know, I asked him one time, I said, do you mind being called Buster Mathis Jr.? Do you just want to be referred to Buster Mathis? And he said, hey, I'm proud to be the son of a great, great contender and a guy I certainly have a lot of respect and admiration for. I don't mind being called Jr. at all. And he considered a man. That's my father. Let his tribute to his dad. And you know, Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, and Jerry Corey also have a little bit of respect for Buster Mathis. And you know, just to rock to the man, they all came back for a special tribute and a benefit dinner to help him to pay some of his medical uh, cost in Grand Rapids, kind of showing the respect that all of those guys showed for one another back in the 60s. Well, have a pretty good finish to a round number six. And again, a tiring Sherman Griffin. One of the things you always want to try to do is to keep those arms off the rope. As you see, he is slumping a little bit there, just trying to keep himself cooled down. Rather warm in the arena tonight here in Tokyo. Sherman providing us some, with some of that live <laughs> corner noises, as we, should we call it? Let's take a look at the busy Buster Mathis Jr. The guy just walks in on his chest, John. Just gets right under all of those, that reach that he had, and there's that uppercut. What just a jolted his neck back. Mm. When you're in punching range, right there, Sherman Griffin is within range of being hit. You've got to be Round punching, seven. otherwise you're going to get hit. <laughs> Welcome to the Cedric Kushner Sports Network and Corona Extra's heavyweight explosion from Tokyo, Japan as Buster Mathis battles on with Sherman Griffin. Sam Smith along with John Saracino, the boxing writer for the USA Today, joining us on our fights. And John, nice to be back with you again. We haven't seen each other since uh, Dusseldorf, Germany. We enjoyed Henry Masker with a big fight there, but it's nice to have you back on our heavyweight explosion. Yeah, we see Sherman Griffin slowly wearing down physically in this fight, Sam. And Buster imposing his will. Now, Griffin wants to be in the center of the ring, except for he doesn't want to be that close. He wants to be jabbing, stepping to the side, then hitting Buster with right hands when he moves in. But you got to question his conditioning, because he's not doing what he did in the first two rounds, certainly. I mean, Buster's like a bull in there. Yeah. If he had a set of horns on his head, he'd be one dangerous dude, let me tell you. Wow. You know, there might be some concern for Sherman Griffin. He might want to change the blue gloves. He does have the ball coming right after his red gloves. And look at Buster come on. Wild right hand followed up with a left. And if Buster just stayed to the body at this point and continued to break down Sherman Griffin, you know, he might be able to connect with some of those right hands and left hooks to the head. Maybe stop it, possibly. It is interesting, by the way, to note that on some of our earlier fights here in Tokyo, Japan, that some of the scoring has been, uh, shall we say, a little bit questionable. So if it does go to the cards, it'll be interesting to find out how they score this fight if it does go to 14 rounds. Buster Mathis Jr. 
trying to pick up another win. Maintain control of his title, even though it's not at stake if he will lose this fight. The USBA heavyweight title will be real as David. And certainly to take all the steam out of this projected fight with Winnie Bowen Jr. Sherman Griffin has a right uppercut. I would suggest to use it right here. Roy Buster's really in at times. His head's unprotected. But when you have a guy firing punches at you like this, and you're just standing in the corner, you're not going to score a lot of points, and you're going to be the target rather than making your opponent to close in. But Griffin has chosen to fight this fight at close quarters. Buster now with a pretty good cut right on the bridge yes. as well. And he backed off. And Sherman realized it. Now he's coming on. He's had some problems with that nose, hasn't he? He's had a lot of problems. Yeah, it's been broken several times. Oh, dangerous punch to throw that uppercut from the outside. So a little concern with a cut on the bridge of the nose. Not that it would stop this fight, but certainly a concern of Buster Mathis while Sherman Griffin trying to be given a pep talk in his corner. And probably, as John has alluded to almost throughout the fight, particularly since round one when Griffin put Mathis down, he's got to stay outside. He's got to fight from a distance. Rumbling inside with Mathis is not the place you want to be. Now they work on that nose. Again, a cut right on the bridge. Again, not one of those that would typically stop a fight. Mathis has fought through worse than this, I'm sure. The fact that he's experienced this before and yeah. he's had it, you know, or should keep him in good stead, he's probably not too worried about it. A lot of times when a fighter's cut for the first time, as Evander Holyfield was in one of his title defenses, uh, they panicked. Round A. Kind of looks like a big Aaron Pryor. A little bit of a there. This is round eight of a scheduled 10 rounder in our heavyweight explosion. Buster Mathis, I'm sure he knows they're fighting eight in the 10 rounds. He wanted to touch up gloves here at the Society of Crowd. A little sportsmanship, but we're not quite ready for that yet, Buster. According to our scorecards, uh, Sherman's going to need to stop or knock out Buster Mathis to win this fight now. Right? Again, and that's our scorecard. Yeah. We've seen some very questionable scoring in earlier bouts. It makes you wonder what the judges uh, from Japan are, are scoring. Get in an earlier fight today. It was uh, opportunity for Terrell Bates to get back in the ring and look for a victory, but Ray Ennis looked extremely sharp. In three knockdowns in the third round, Terrell Biggs to win one of our main events of the night. And Buster Mathis is trying to win one here. Sherwin Griffin may have a different idea, but right now he's not doing enough to steal it back away, I don't think. We've seen Buster being a little bit more cautious and staying on the outside, maybe taking a little bit more roll here. In the eighth round, he threw a nice sizzling combination there a few moments ago. But preferring to work on the outside, giving uh, Sherman a little bit different look. You know, Buster trains in what is called the Pride Boxing Gym up in Grand Rapids. They have several outstanding young fighters there trying to develop a pretty good little stable. With Buster Mathis Sr. along with Brian Lee and Bruce Kelty. This is definitely the pride of the stable right now. Buster Mathis Jr., good hard worker. He's coming to Japan, put that work ethic right to work. He had to, coming off the canvas in round one. You see Buster uh, pawing at his nose. That, that may be bothering him a little bit more than we suspect. Especially the fact that he's backed off here in the eighth round and he's not fighting on the inside. Yeah, I guess it, get, it hurts when you get hit on the nose. Right? <laughs> but Sherman Griffin is not taking much advantage of it. No, he's not. This is really where he needs to be. Uh, this was his going to be a stock, kind of punching, boxing outside. Look at him. He's walking yeah, around not no. throwing any punches. He, he, he doesn't have much left in the tank, Sam. And uh, he's not going to win a fight doing this. And you can see his legs are going on. You know, that little dancing around is the first sign of the fighters just trying to say, okay, come on, legs. Trying to keep alive. Yeah, exactly. Trying to, trying to say, okay, come on now. Don't leave me now. <laughs> it's almost to the point the heart is willing, but the body has said no. Yeah, I think that's what we're seeing right now is Griffin. It's a fatigue factor setting in. John, you've seen he doesn't even look like he wants to fight at this point. The referee can almost stop they could, because he's almost turned his back and his shoulders on Buster at that point. Buster would step up the tempo here and put
put some kind of a flurry, he might be able to get a stoppage out of this fight and uh, go home two rounds early. You know it, he's only had three knockouts in his pro career as he ends the eighth round. Well, what started out to be a little unusual fight and the fact that Buster Mathis went down in the first round, and I tell you what, was very close, John, to being in real trouble in that first round. Just staggered off the canvas, got his game plan back together, particularly in the second round, was able to survive the first A. B was able to regain control and then got in his office on the chest of Griffin, and now even Mathis, maybe realizing his head on the card, is backed off and fighting a little more cautiously right now. Which is not a bad move on Buster's part. And as it turns out, that first round was Griffin's best shot to win the fight. Yep, it's not going to happen unless we, uh, there's a miracle punch landed some here in, somewhere in the last two rounds. Get a good overview of this smallish arena that has been jam-packed. The tickets have gone very well, and they're being rewarded with some pretty good action here as Buster Mathis gets ready to answer the bell in round nine. Just looking at his nose makes me wince. Good luck at Sherman Griffin as he answers the bell for round nine as Buster Mathis coming off the stool a little bit late. You see him dancing away from the charging uh, Griffin who came over in a hurry but didn't do anything with it. Now you're starting to hear a little bit more sounds coming out of Buster Mathis here. Interesting. Griffin threw one jab, and Buster said, not today, and threw a four or five punch combination, got Griffin right off him. This is an unusual style for Buster Mathis, to be honest with you. I've done a lot of his fights, but he's kind of outside and trying to box a little bit here. This is the Buster Mathis I've seen. Good hand speed. Excellent hand speed for a heavyweight. And he knows where he is on the card, regardless of what the scoring has been earlier. And he also knows that Sherman Griffin, as tired as he may be, also put him down in round one. That's right. Well, the inevitable question has to come. John Saracino from the USA Today boxing card, ready to go. And Buster Mathis, that's a tough step up for Buster Mathis. Uh, if we were talking about horse racing, we would be talking about Buster going from a $10,000 claiming race to a million dollar stakes race. I mean, he is stepping up in class to that level. And he's going to need some luck that night to beat Riddick Bowe. There's no question about it. He's going to be a sizable underdog. On the other hand, who knows? Maybe Riddick Bowe doesn't take Buster that seriously. Sees what we see. He figures I can handle this guy. He's not a big puncher. He's open to be hit. And uh, a lot of times that's a fighter's downfall. But you know one thing, Buster Mathis Jr. is going to give his all that night. And, he, and Riddick Bowe is going to know that he was in a fight. I can't say a lot of heart. He's got a huge heart. And he's got a, a work ethic. He'll be ready. And I think you made a great point, John, early on. I really believe that Buster came out of the locker room really, literally not ready. Circumstances of the timing coming into the ring. And, just really got blocked by Sherman Griffin early on in the fight, but he has made a marvelous recovery and really fighting an unusual Buster Mathis fight. And in fact, they're going and throw those Floria punches, as you see, and back, back out. Not the usual stay on your chest Buster Mathis, but a very smart fight tonight. I think you're right, Sam. I think he realizes that he's got the fight totally in control. I'm sure the corner has uh, advised him of that, that he's way ahead. Don't get caught with any silly punches. And I think the nose thing is bothering him, too. That's really when he backed off from even that nose busted wide open. And also, he's got a big fight coming up against Bono. I mean, why take silly chances? But he also knows that with the fight, that he can be cut again. And uh, he doesn't want to pay the way he fights. He doesn't want to take the chance of getting a head cut and getting another cut. And obviously walking into a big punch and maybe even taking the chance of doing that. I'll tell you what, he's working to the end of round nine. Sherman Griffin literally helping the air conditioning in the arena tonight as he really sucked in some air as he headed back to his corner. And as a matter of fact, not even wanting to take a seat. And that's a good indication the legs are very tired. Does not want to take a chance of getting down and getting some cramping or not being able to get back up. So he's going to stand between this, the ninth and tenth round, the final round of our fight on our heavyweight explosion tonight. It's been an active fight, John. It has not been a lackluster fight by any means. We've seen, of course, the, the element of surprise. Sherman Griffin putting Mathis down, Mathis recovering, being busy, and then fighting a smart, intelligent fight. It's nice to see that kind of element in this kind of fight with Buster Mathis Jr. tonight. Clearly, he's in control at this point. And, uh, you know, like we said earlier, 
The other guy needs a miracle at this point. Round does. 10. A big Last miracle. round. Sushi crowd here in Tokyo, Japan gets ready to watch the 10th and final round. Made of it of our heavyweight explosion up on the ride in the light blue Buster Mathis Jr. Sherman Griffin fighting out of the Texas area, even though he lives in St. Louis, Missouri. 31-year-old journeyman. Great early career. Problems in his personal life, going to prison, out of the ring for three years. Putting together four straight wins on his comeback, but tonight it may come to a close after a quick start. It's a rather slow finish for Sherman Griffin. Ooh, a nice little left hook a few moments ago there, and I haven't seen him do that much of the fight for Griffin. Compact left hook. Didn't follow up on it. By the way, a little credit where credit is due. Ken Morita has been our referee, a Japanese amateur referee who has stepped in and referees a lot of the pro fights here, lightweights as they might be. He's in there with the heavyweights here tonight and basically has kind of stayed out of the way. And that's a good, good sign of a good referee. You notice how he's let them grapple on the inside, kind of work themselves out of a lot of clinches. He's ever done any sumo wrestling? Probably a few he's used to that. <laughs> he's used to breaking up bigger guys than this. That's probably right. These guys are small compared to those guys. By the way, in Japan, one of the things you want to watch out for are the bouncers at some of the clubs. They are former sumo wrestlers. You don't want to tell you those guys. I'm glad you advised me of that. Thank you very much. Halfway through the final round of our main event tonight. You know, the crowd is warm to the task here tonight. I thought they'd gotten into this fight pretty well. I think they've enjoyed the last couple heavyweight fights they've seen. There's been a lot of good action. We've seen guys hit the deck. And that's, let's face it, that's what people want in heavyweights. They want to see big punches. Sherman just got to let it all hang out now, as they used to say. He's arm, he's arm weary. Yeah. You can see it. There's, not, there's no steam on his punch. He's got no snap there right now. Truth be told, he's in bigger danger of being knocked out than the punch at this point. There you go, there you go. Nice for Mathis Jr. again, trying to pick up another win, which will be his 14th win on his column for the wins. He actually lost to Mike Sabali Hunter in Corpus Christi, Texas in December of 93 for the USDA title. Hunter retaining the title that night. But then testing positive for drugs after the fight was under. And the fight itself was ruled as a no contest, thus taking the loss off the record of Buster Mathis just to set the record straight for him. Buster still, that kind of sticks in his craw. He really took that loss very, very heavily. But he was outboxed. Mike the Bounty Hunter, despite his personal problems out of the ring, is a very good fighter as they fight to the end of this one here tonight. You can hear the appreciative crowd here in Tokyo, Japan, as they have watched the heavyweights in our heavyweight explosion fight to the end. And Sherman Griffin literally staggering around the rim, <laughs> uh, the ring trying to find his, his corner once again. He ought to be trying to find a stool right now to sit on. Buster Mathis, not your svelte-looking uh, heavyweight by any stretch, but again, keep in mind at 305 pounds once in his career. Malcolm Garrett, by the way, also working out of that corner. The Director of Boxing for Cedric Kushner out of New York City. Sag Harbor, Long Island to be exact. I thought I saw a familiar face in the camera pan there. By the way, Malcolm, I don't know if he knows where his home is in uh, Indiana right now. He's been on the road to South Africa, to Germany, to Japan. I'm not really know. As a matter of fact, he knows where his hotel room is and his his traveling bag, but outside of that, I'm not really sure. I would like to have his frequent flyer account and yours, Sam. That's right. Well, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've had a few miles. You and I both, as a matter of fact. Buster Mathis, again, we've alluded to the fact that he will retain his USBA title. Not that this was a title fight. It had to go 12 rounds and, of course, designated by the USBA to be a title fight. It was not. But he stuck a chance of losing that title. If he had lost, they would have ruled the title vacant and also would have done in his chances of going in with momentum against a Reddick Bow on June the 11th. Jimmy Lennon Jr. is just about ready for the announcement of the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we have a majority decision, and here are the score totals. The referee in charge, Ken Morita, scores about 95 to 95, even a draw. 
Overruled by the judges at Ringside, Judge Asao scores at 97 to 94. Nakamori scores at 97 to 95 in favor of the winner, Buster Mathis Jr. We have seen some early judging questions, and I think uh, a majority decision here, particularly the way Mathis had taken control, truly was down in the first round that kind of got Griffin on the board early, but uh, truly a, a solid fight for Mathis, and to get a majority decision is rather unusual.